edition of the power rankings for our league this year. This is right after the draft. So um, this is before anyone's played any games. Just based off draft results alone. Um, I'm going to start from 10 and work my way up. Um, coming in at 10th place, we have Panda. Um, Panda held on to his... Panda held on to his money way too long in the draft, and it really shows. Um, he doesn't have any elite players, really. Um, Phillip Rivers, starting quarterback, not bad. Um, Percy Harvin's got a lot of upside. Outside that, Vincent Jackson and Chris Johnson are his best players. Toby Gerhardt, Bishop Sankey, not a good starting lineup. He's got some guys on his bench that could perform a little better. Roddy White, Eric Decker, Kendall Wright. So he's got some depth there, but it's definitely an uphill battle right now. Coming in at 9, I put myself. Um, very rarely do I... Well, very, very rarely does anyone think their team is not good after a draft. Generally, you know, you pick the guys that you think are going to do well, but I just... Strategy did not come to play for me today. I was not paying attention on my money and whatnot. That said, I got a couple key components here. Julius Thomas, obviously an elite tight end. Le'Veon Bell is supposed to be a top five, maybe six, seven running back this year. Steven Jackson has a lot of upside. Jordy Nelson. Um, after that, it's tough. Quarterback is between Alex Smith and Ben Roethlisberger, not great. And the uh, last flex spot right now is James Jones. So I definitely need at least one more solid flex play and improvement at quarterback to really contend. Coming in at 8, I have Travis. Um, he had about half of his draft was auto-pick, so it could be, could be worse, I guess. Andrew Luck, good quarterback, but definitely overpaid for him. Not his fault, but what are you going to do? Get to the draft on time next time. Uh, Adrian Peterson, obviously a stud. Matt Forte, a stud. Okay, you got a few studs there. Michael Crabtree definitely has potential. We'll see how well he does this year. Uh, with staying healthy and whatnot. Shane Vereen has some potential. Julian Edelman has some potential. Ruben Randall isn't really an everyday start kind of guy, but he's in his lineup right now. Uh, Jordan Cameron, not a bad tight end. Um, and he's got Cam Newton on his bench behind Luck, so he could actually turn flop one of those for some trade bait. So really not a bad team, but I still put him here at eighth. Uh, coming in at seven. I have Corey. Corey, I think he paid a little too much on Brady. I do think he's going to have a bounce back year, but he played almost elite money for him. So we'll see. Eddie Lacy, definitely very good. Outside of that, the only elite player he really has is Gronk. And it's Gronk. We don't know how long he's going to be healthy for. If he stays healthy, it's definitely a huge addition with the Brady Gronk tandem. But. You know, that's a big question mark, and that question mark's going to be what determines the season. Coming in at 7, right? 12, 11, 10, 9, no, 8. Uh, I don't know. Uh, coming in at 8, we have uh, Nate Lee. Um, he's got a few studs. Aaron Rodgers, Alfred Morris. Outside of that, though, uh, Vernon Davis, too. But outside that, Stephen Ridley, Pierre Thomas, Cecil Shorts, Michael Floyd, not bad starters, but he's about one stud away from really rallying out this team. He does have Kaepernick on his bench, so maybe there's some trade bait there. Uh, next we have, coming in at 7th, getting to the middle of the pack now, we have Juwan. Uh, Juwan gets the award for bitching the most. Actually, I'm going to have to give that award to Dave. Juwan gets honorable mention. Um... Currently, he's got Johnny Manziel listed as starting quarterback, but I know because he hasn't set his lineup, he'll probably start Matt Ryan. And if Johnny Manziel comes in to start for Cleveland, that'd be good for him. But uh, Marshawn Lynch and Jamal Charles and AJ Green is a awesome core. Fills it out with McFadden. Definitely has some upside depending on how they use McFadden with Jones Drew. Uh, Tavon Austin's got a little bit of upside. He's one of the best receivers in St. Louis. And uh, Delaney Walker, tight end for Tennessee, could see an increase in receptions this year. Not a bad team by any means. 
Now we're in the top six. Eric. Looking back, I probably could have put Eric a little bit lower, but I like this team and I expect it to grow. Between RG3 and Nick Foles, I definitely see him making a trade in the future. He's always looking to trade. and He's got two viable options at quarterback. Um, Monty Ball, definitely an everyday starter. Demarius Thomas, number one wide receiver last year. Antonio Brown, number six wide receiver last year. Crabtree stays healthy. He's definitely going to help him. Uh, and Garcon, very solid. D'Angelo Williams, I guess, would be this weak link there. But even D'Angelo Williams was 23rd ranked running back last year. Uh, if he starts to get some more end zone carries, then he's definitely a, a good option there. It's Jonathan Stewart was taking a lot of those end zone carries last year, though. Number five, Bernardo. Here we have a, a team with probably the most upside, but very dangerous team at the same time. Uh, Calvin Johnson is a safe bet, obviously. Joyke Bell has incredible upside, depending on how they use him. Uh, ben Tate, now the starter in Cleveland, could emerge as a top to upper second tier running back if they utilize him and if the line can you know, really get him some good blocks. Rashad Jennings is in a similar situation. Now the starter in uh, New York. And Andre Ellington, uh, the starter in Arizona. So those guys all have very, very high potential. So we'll see how they go. That, that season definitely rides on the running backs. Number four, Dave Jesus. First of all, props for staying for the whole thing. Uh, you stayed up till midnight. Congratulations. Uh, Peyton Manning. I mean, yeah, he had 55 touchdowns last year, but what has he done for me lately? No, Peyton Manning will be good. Arian Foster will be good. Doug Martin will be good. I like the picks in Cordero Patterson and Torrey Smith. Definitely going to see some improvement there from them. Emmanuel Sanders could be interesting, depending on how Denver uses him. He's in a crowded uh, wideout core, but they're throwing the ball around. Jeremy Macklin... Could definitely have some potential. Um, I like this team. It's very well-rounded. He's got Mike Wallace, Ryan Matthews, Terrence Williams, Anquan Bolden, no Sean Moreno, and Tony Romo on his bench. That right there is better than some starting lineups in this league. Very, very solid team, and uh, I expect him to do pretty well. Coming in at three is my brother. Uh, finally changed his team name after over a year in the league, but uh, not the best, but it's fine. Drew Brees, Zach Stacy, Reggie Bush, Reggie Wayne, Fred Jackson, Andre Johnson, Randall Cobb, Greg Olson. Very, very consistent group there. Andre Johnson's a bit of a question mark, as is Reggie Wayne, but pretty safe bets most of the way across the board. He does have uh, Danny Woodhead on his bench, just in case something happens to one of them. Well-rounded team that doesn't have too many stars with fill-ins, everyone's around the same second tier level, which is often very good. Let's see, number two, Mr. Christopher Breen. Woo! Um, Matt Stafford and Andy Dalton. Uh, again, another situation where he could use one as a trade bait, or he might just, you know, play him out, see, play out the matchup, see what he's got week to week. Demarco Murray is definitely going to be a stud this year, as he was last year. Giovanni Bernard, I see having a great year in Cincinnati, especially with another year under his belt as a starter. Wes Welker, he got dirt cheap for five bucks. If he keeps off the concussions, he's going to be a huge threat in the Denver offense. Mike Evans, the rookie, is very, you know, we'll see what happens. He's a rookie, you never know, but it was a cheap pickup, so definitely worth it. Des Bryant, perennial superstar. Larry Fitzgerald. Not the same level as Des Bryant, but definitely a star. Jason Witten. People say he's on the decline, but he's still consistently getting 80, 90, 100 catches. Not so much 100 anymore, but a lot of catches. PPR league, very valuable and consistent. All right, that leaves number one. Believe it or not, protege. Now, yes, what? I know. It's a little weird. He's number one. But rest assured, by week two, he'll stop paying attention, and his team will go to shit. Right now, I gotta love this team. Russell Wilson at quarterback. 
his, his ranked eighth last year, but with another year under his belt and the confidence of being a Super Bowl winning quarterback, I think he has room to grow. LaShawn McCoy, number two running back last year, could even be number one this year. And in, in, plus in a PPR league, that's huge. Frank Gore, definitely on the decline, but he's still the number one guy. Even last year, he was 15th ranked running back, and he get, catches 60, 70 catches a year. Trent Richardson's a little bit of a question mark for me. In Indy, I'm not sure how they're going to use him. Uh, they didn't use him quite to his capability last year, although they did a little bit more towards the end of the season. If he can reach his potential, that's a huge, huge bonus for him. Riley Cooper is definitely looking to see more time this year. Deshaun Jackson, perennial all-star, now in Washington. See how he does with RG3. He could propel himself back to a top five wide receiver. Victor Cruz, again, always very good. Last year was a bit of a down year, but I see him coming back up. Jimmy Graham is the best wide receiver in the league, and he doesn't even have him playing wide receiver. He's got him at tight end. If any of that doesn't work out, he's got Steve Smith now playing in Baltimore on his bench. He's got Eli Manning, which is a viable backup quarterback. Doug Baldwin rounds it out, too. I definitely see him winning the first couple of weeks, but if he doesn't pay attention... It could drop off. If injuries occur, he doesn't watch the waiver wire, we'll see. So that was the first edition of Power Rankings. Good luck, everyone, in the first week, and uh, please pay attention.